So what I want to do is I want to show you what the end goal is before we get started with the k-means algorithm because this is going to explain to you um, kind of where we're going, um, where we're, what we're going to implement with the k-means algorithm and then also the UMAP. So what the k-means algorithm does, and you can see this chart that we have here, it's the customer segmentation, a 2D projection. And what k-means is doing is it's grouping these customers into different clusters. So you can see here we've got cluster four, and these are all the customers that are in there. Uh, cluster three is right here. Uh, cluster two is here, and then this is cluster one. So what we're trying to do is use the k-means algorithm, and there's a couple parameters that we'll talk about once we get into the function. But what I want you to understand is a little bit about how it works so you understand what we're going to be doing. So k-means is an algorithm that is called an unsupervised algorithm. So we, um, there's, there's supervised machine learning and then there's unsupervised. Uh, unsupervised is when you don't know exactly um, how many, say, groups to label uh, these customers into. Uh, we're kind of guessing. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to pr be providing k-means some information. We're going to say, you know, one, two, three, four, et cetera, all the way up to, to say 15 groups. And we're going to try and figure out which is the best group um, using uh, some, some parameters that uh, the k-means algorithm will compute for us. So uh, here we have four, which is what we'll end up with, but uh, we're going to be trying out many different centers. So that's what we mean when we say unsupervised. Uh, we don't necessarily know going in versus a supervised problem, which would be like if we have a data set that's already been labeled for us where we have, uh, you know, customer churn, yes or no, the customer left or not. So um, this is going to be an unsupervised problem. What we're going to do is we're going to provide it many different numbers of clusters and we're going to let the k-means algorithm um, compute different uh, and decide which which customers get picked into these different clusters and then um, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to visualize it so for the k-means algorithm to work again we're going to provide it a number of different centers to choose from and then we're going to compute this thing called tote with within ss and that's stands for total within sum of squared error. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to compute a distance measurement that is uh, called this sum of squared error. And uh, for example, for one center, this is what the sum of squared error is. When we split it up into two groups, that error drops down. And for three groups, it drops down even further. And four groups, it drops down more, five, and so on. So this is what's called a scree plot. And what this is going to do is we're looking for a bend in the plot, um, which we're going to see one right around four, where from three to four, it's dropping quite a bit. But then from four to five, it drops a lot less. And then from five to six, it's not dropping very much and, and so on. So once we get to four, that's where we're getting the most of the drop already. And then from four to, to 15, um, we're not getting that many drops when we keep increasing the group sizes uh, or in increasing the number of groups. So this is basically what we're going to be going for in this particular section on the k-means. We're going to run this k-means algorithm on this data set and we're going to uh, run it for a number of different centers and we're going to compute this uh, thing called total within SS and that's going to help us determine whether or not the k-means algorithm um, where, where, to, where to stop the number of groups at. Okay, so let's get started. 